Good morning. How you doing? Hey, today's a great day. Today is Thursday. This is my down day. This is the day. I look all right. This is the day when we have had our our Wednesday fellowship was last night, and uh, our next service is Sunday morning, and so. I don't even have to think about Sunday morning right now. Although, after we have breakfast with our friends this morning, we will go to the church and start to rehearse our music for Sunday. We'll pick out the music for Sunday and then I have to take pictures of it on my camera and send it to our tech people. Send it to Anna, our tech people, and her and her family get everything ready for uh, the PowerPoints and everything. We're a high-tech organization. Hey, I want to talk to you today about how God decides who to heal. How God decides who to heal. Do you ever wonder about that? I guarantee you have. I guarantee you have. Now, we all praise God and jump up and down and rejoice when somebody gets healed. We all do that. But how does that happen? How does that happen? And it's just, we had some, I still remember this lady uh, in Wisconsin. And they came to our church for a while up there. And uh, that was our first church that we pastored. And we actually co-pastored that church with our mentor. And uh, that was Neil Syverson, who is in Alaska now. I think he's getting ready to move to Hawaii. They're going to start a Bible school in Hawaii. But in our, in our church up there, uh, this, this lady and her husband came, and they had been going down the road in their car, and somehow or another, a truck or something in front of them kicked up a rock, and it came, a rock about that big around, came through the windshield and hit her right beside her nose in her cheek and crushed her cheek. And she had had about 10 operations. Uh, the doctors were trying to reconstruct and put those little, the bones were just fragmented and trying to put everything back together. And she was just in incredible pain. And uh, we were, she had everybody praying for her. That didn't do any good. And she came to our church because she had heard that people were being healed there. And I remember the first Sunday she came, she said to me, she said, I guess I just don't have enough faith to be healed. We've had a lot of people in our church get healed who didn't have any faith. And my heart just went out to her because she was quite elderly and, and in so much pain and it was just, well, it just didn't seem fair. She was a godly, a godly woman. Wonderful lady. Husband was great. Wonderful guy. But she was just crying all the time because of the pain. And the pain wouldn't go away. As I don't know if she, I never, you know, we saw her a couple times and then we didn't see her again. I don't know if she ever got healed or not. But I've thought about her often. Uh, simply because of the pain that she was going through. And the question always is, why does God heal some people and not others? How does God decide who to heal? Well, now that we know a little bit more than we did then, we've come to understand that when somebody doesn't get healed, there's always a reason. You know, uh, 
the first thing the pastor will say uh, when when somebody doesn't get healed is they say, well, or when somebody gets sick and dies. When somebody gets sick and dies, uh, the preacher will comfort the family and say, well, we don't always know the ways of God. And he sounds so wise when he says that. And he is so wrong. How many of you know you can sound wise and still be wrong? A lot of these preachers are. Amen? A lot of these preachers are. And, but we do know the reason. When something happens, there's a reason for it. When something does not happen, there's a reason for that too. Nothing happens or not happens Without, there's a reason for everything. There's a reason for everything. I like what T.D. Jakes said years ago, and I remember hearing him say this. I was watching him on TV. I watch the good preachers on TV. And, and he's a great preacher. And he said, nothing just happens. Well, I did a lot of thinking about that. Nothing just happens. There's a reason for everything. There's a, many times it's wrong choices or right choices. We, we made a, a choice. Mary, Mary said to me, we were pastoring our first church up there and we were untrained and unschooled. And although we were educated, we weren't, uh, we didn't have seminary degrees and things like that. And Mary said to me one day, she says, she says, you know, if you want to do this, you need to go to school. I said, okay, let's go. The next question was, what school are we going to go to? I mean, we, we that now that turned out to be a monumentous decision. A huge decision to go to school because we received training. I mean, you, you can't do any professional job without professional training and credentials. Amen. So everything is a result. We didn't just wind up at Rama. We made a decision. And we packed our stuff, put it in a truck, and headed south from Wisconsin. Everything is the result. Every, everything, everything is the result of a decision. Nothing just happens. And God does not just arbitrarily pick out people to heal and go like, well, let's see. I think I'll heal this person and that person and not these people over there, and maybe that one, and, and, and the little guy in the back, we'll heal him, and the, the lady, no, no, we're not going to heal her, but we'll heal this lady up here. God doesn't do that. God doesn't do that. He decides who to heal but it has to be based. You make every decision based on information. Every decision is based on information and God makes his decisions based on faith. Now, James chapter five, verse 15. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. Hebrews 11.6 says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. That verse really means, if I was rewriting the Bible in today's vernacular, I would rewrite Hebrews chapter, six, chapter 11, verse 6, this way. I, it would say, without faith, you get nothing from God. Faith must be involved 
And if it is, God will decide to heal that person. Every single time. When faith is in God, involved, God moves every single time without fail and without delay. A couple of years ago, we did an event over in Orlando and a lady came there who was totally blind. Her eyes were all milky and one going this way and one going that way. And, you know, and she couldn't, she couldn't tell if it was day or night. But she was excited when she came there. <clears throat> and we sang a couple songs and I taught a little bit on healing. And I'm telling you what, that woman absolutely could not sit still. She was so excited. And when I said, uh, who needs to be healed? They brought her up and I said, sit her, in a, sit her down in a chair. I, I keep the first row open usually, unless the meetings are packed. I keep the first row open because I want people to sit down when I minister to them. You don't need to fall over to get healed when I'm ministering. Amen. Matter of fact, I prefer you don't. She sat in front of me and I said, who wants to see a miracle? And her eyes were opened in two minutes. In two minutes, that woman could see perfectly. Now, when did God decide to heal her? Well, when I combined my faith with hers, and I'm here to tell you, that woman came there with faith. But I combined my faith with hers, and God healed her. I'm telling you what, when faith is involved, God will heal every single time without fail and usually without delay. The healing process starts. Now, you may not feel 100% better instantly, but I guarantee you're going to get better once we speak over you and pray over you because we do it in faith. If you need healing, please get a hold of me. If you know anybody who needs healing, please have them call me. We can get them healed. We get people healed right over the phone. Cancer, all kinds. We've had, we've had children healed off their deathbeds when people put me on speaker in the intensive care unit. And I speak to them right over the phone. They get up. Glory to God. I mean, that's the power in the name of Jesus. We do it in faith. There's so much power in that name, I'm telling you. It will heal people in California. We can get people healed anywhere. All they have to do is hear our voice. Amen. Glory to God. That's how God decides who to heal. When faith is involved, he decides to heal every single day. If you know somebody that's sick, have them call me. If you know somebody that's broke, we can get the blessing of God into their life too. Huh? Hallelujah. And somebody said it's never happened with an amputee growing out limbs. It has happened. It has happened. Read up on it. It's never happened in my ministry yet, but it has happened. Glory to God. I mean, there is nothing God can't do. Absolutely nothing. He created us. He can heal us. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hey, uh, when you tithe or make an offering to this ministry, call me at the same time because I want to speak a blessing over you while you do it. Go out there today and make it a great day. And remember this. God's word will save your soul, heal your body, and pay your bills. <laughs>